Hello, bonjour. Hello, Anand, Comment bonjour. Vous? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you, Robert? I'm good. First time on set since yes. I got back. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. So now let's do some tech. Uh -huh. And uh, we're talking about the internet. The internet is a blessing to the 21st century, but a case for a few who have landed in big trouble for political reasons. The internet is a global system that interconnects computer networks using the internet protocol to link devices worldwide. Too technical, I understand, but it's basically what you use to connect to your social media accounts and visit websites. It is not easy to do so in Ethiopia, where the country has shut down the mobile internet to avoid cheating during an ongoing nationwide high school examination. This is a university entrance exam for over 200,000 students, but everyone is suffering from the directive, which is the second time it is being enforced. Internet was shut down during the same exam last year after the papers leaked online, causing embarrassment to the government. The government said last week Wednesday, when the internet was shut, that they are being proactive and want students to concentrate and be free of psychological pressure and distractions. Well, this has been widely condemned, especially with reference to the United Nations Human Rights Council resolution passed last year condemning the blocking of internet as a human rights violation. Reporters Without Borders also condemned the action, which it described as a danger to freedom of information and press freedom. For now, it is off until the end of the exam on Thursday. There is a similar situation in Egypt, but this time targeted at the online media. Egyptian authorities blocked over 20 news websites last week, accusing them of supporting terrorism and spreading false news. Journalists resorted to publishing articles on social media. This was also condemned by a group of civil society organizations, including Internet Without Borders and Access Now. They called on the Egyptian authorities to respect freedom of expression and information. The shutdown is not new to Africa and so many countries like the Gambia, Burundi, Congo, Brazzaville, Egypt, Sudan, the Central African Republic, Niger and the Democratic Republic of Congo have been shutting down their internet during elections. The government say they are curbing misinformation. However, their reason is no reason at all because so many other countries conduct elections with their internets on and it's successful. So this is not the right way to go by this. Now let's move to satellites. We always hear about satellites being launched out there into space, but hardly hear about African satellites. This is not the case anymore because in South Africa, the first privately owned nano satellite has been successfully launched into orbit from the International Space Station. The N-Site-1 weighs only 2.5 kilograms. It was launched on May 24 and it will orbit Earth and capture images with its remote sensing camera. The satellite was locally designed and built by SCS Space Company over a period of six months using space infrastructure in South Africa. It is expected to study the largely unexplored lower atmosphere and send information back to the SCS space team on the ground. This is part of a European Commission project that deployed a batch of 28 nanosatellites from 23 different countries to space. This is not the first locally designed satellite to be launched into space. South Africa launched its first satellite in 1999. Now to Ghana, where last week there was also a launch of a satellite developed by university students. The Ghana Sat-1, which weighs one kilogram, was launched into space last Thursday as students of the All Nations University and government officials watched it live. It was launched from the International Space Station after it was handed over in February. It took three young engineering students of the university two years to design, assemble, and test the satellite as part of a Japanese space project. Described as the first university satellite in sub-Saharan Africa, the Ghana Sat-1 has low and high resolution cameras attached to it to take pictures and provide data of the coastal areas of the country. Its main mission is to investigate the radiation effects on satellite systems in space, which are degraded due to harsh space environment. On the other hand, the satellite will broadcast Ghana's national songs from space and also collect songs from the ground to broadcast. The university presented a prototype of the satellite to President Akufoado, who congratulated them for the historical achievement for the country. Africa is indeed rising. My name is Ismail Akwe, and this is SciTech.